So I am Anayat, and I am from the second generation of Logic ERP. My dad started this company with his best friend around 30 years ago. You will see him on stage very shortly, moderating the next panel. So let me tell you what it is that Logic ERP does. We provide an end-to-end -end ERP solution, everything from manufacturing, warehouse, distribution to retail. It's an end-to-end -end solution. Some of the verticals that we work with are pharma, apparel and footwear, electronics, and FMCG. So we've been working with a lot of our customers, and we love to see our customers grow. One such customer that we have is the KKCL Group, their brand Killer Jeans that we have been working with for quite some time. Uh, they have around four production units, three warehouses, 100 plus distributors, 350 plus EBOs, some 550 plus LFRs. So these are all working on a single database and on cloud, and they're working on real time. There is no syncing that takes place. So, and our, our uh, topic for today's panel is omni-channel, which is a quite interesting topic. A recent Harvard Business Review article that I read suggested that while e-commerce will continue to be an essential element of retail strategy, the future success of retailers will depend on creating a cohesive customer experience both online and in stores. This can only be achieved through a strong omni-channel presence. This is what we love doing. This is what we help our brands achieve. We help them achieve omni-channel success. So without further ado, let's welcome our brilliant panel today and hear about their views on this topic. Please welcome them with a huge round of applause. All right, so let's have a beautiful panel on stage now, starting with Dad, Swarandeep Singh from Logic ERP. And then we have Siddharth from Snitch. And then we have Raghav from B Bazaar. And we have Anirudh from Kantakala. And we have Mr. Sushant from Health and Grow and Glow. And we have Mr. Agnes. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I think I've got everyone. Thank you very much uh, with the, such a, a wonderful panelist here. So, uh, it's my honor to be, say, the moderator here. Uh, see, on the starting, say, like, I would like to discuss it, like, let's start talking about the canvas of India. A 50% population of India is below a 25. And 65% population is below 35. And there is 650, uh, 642 million internet users in India. And <clears throat> 750 million smartphone users. And the estimate online retail market size by this year is 73 billion US dollars. So it's a well-set market, and 
it all depends upon how you leverage on this technology to achieve the best sales from you. Today, we would like to hear from all of you, say, how to grow with this omni-channel world? Say, my, my first question to all of you, say, the omni-channel retail is the new normal, right? Before, say, after this pandemic. And I would like to hear from you why you think it is a must in today's scenario. So that's uh, like we'll start from you. Yeah, I think uh, for any business to scale, you need to be customer obsessed. Uh, so I think understanding your consumer and being available at uh, multiple touch points is very important. And uh, that is where omni-channel uh, comes into the play. I mean, um, so, so basically it is the journey from maybe your Facebook ad to your website and uh, you know then to, to, to your um, uh, maybe a physical store and having that unified inventory uh, across uh, each and every um, channel uh, and giving that seamless customer experience is uh, really important and uh, that is where uh, uh, you know uh, the whole uh, concept of omni channel evolves around uh, and it is purely towards the kind of obsession you have towards your consumer and what kind of experience you want to deliver them um, so yeah i mean um, so ba basically it is um, your uh, uh, availability uh, towards the uh, uh, exact branding content story across multiple channels uh, and uh, giving that seamless experience uh, to your customer good so raga what's your point of view so well said about no, well, you know, post the pandemic, I think everything we've started seeing, you know, the whole digitization and the e-commerce platforms have, you know, pushed, I mean, the, it has acted like a catalyst, right, to them. And uh, it's required for, you know, companies to be online, you know, when you're competing with the likes of big players like Amazon or Flipkart. Um, again, I would say, you know, omni-channel is good, right? I mean, it's, in, it's an important thing because it provides you an extra channel to reach out to the customer base that you're probably not reaching out on to your, through your physical presence. Uh, right, so, uh, so omni-channel, again, helps you probably explore the potential locations where you could probably expand it into. Uh, I, th I think, yeah, that, that's pretty much it over omni. Yeah, that gives you the reach extra miles to reach to the customers, say, n number of locations, the whole India is open for you through the omni-channel, which can't be delivered by the only on your brick and mortar stores. Well said, good. Yeah, and it's like... So, one of the most important thing is I come from a legacy brand which is 75 years old, and uh, we have gone online five years back. And mostly when it's a traditional retail store, they're running, you know, they're running happily. And then when something online starts, it starts as a separate entire business. And this is the case in majority of the companies where traditional retail stores are running and online stores are running separately. And then we've realized that in those, after starting after a few years that we need to have a more unified approach toward e-commerce and physical stores. And that is when, you know, we, that is what we've realized is being omni-channel, being a single touch point, to have a same touch point for your customers across your marketing channels and across your sales channel and sell the same product and sell it at the same price across all channels. That is what I believe uh, omni-commerce omni is. Good, good, good. Yes. Hello. Yeah, so see, I think uh, omni-channel, it's actually like a seamless experience that we provide to the customer, independent of the channel that she comes from, right? It could be an offline interaction or an online interaction. Well, of course, we speak a lot about, let's say, an express delivery, like uh, at Health and Glow, we do express deliveries from the nearest store or click and collect, which of course have become a little common now, right? Uh, it is, it is actually about when the customer is interacting with the brand, how seamless, how good that experience is. Anirudh also touched upon an important point about marketing. Today, if you are spending so many marketing dollars, I think it is important that we get that customer to buy, irrespective of the channel, whether it is online or offline. And I think that is why it becomes very important. So in effect, it could be a unique differentiator in this hyper-competitive world. Only channel can be a unique differentiator for sure. Yeah. 
see, uh, see, I've been in retail for last 20, 25 years. I've seen Indian retail evolving. See, what I see is there is only one customer. Their need is same. But the way their shop has changed over you know, 10, 15 years. They used to come to a shop. They have a very good. They come maybe twice a month. They go for shopping. They do the entire shopping and come back. Later, it become a weekly habit. When the malls come up, they start going out for weekly, just keep shopping. Then once this entire e-commerce started booming, they just want to keep looking at what is happening. When, whenever they like something, they just place order. It comes delivered. They like it, they'll keep it. If they don't like it, they just return it. With all the experience, what customers actually enjoying is the buying the product, what they really like it. See, one of the challenge when you know uh, world is evolving, they go to the store. They don't get the size. So what they do is they'll check whether we'll be able to get from the nearest store. That is in the olden days. Today, what is with the Omni channel, what is happening is if I don't get the size, our store manager is able to tell the customers, you shop online, we will deliver it to you in two days. Whichever nearest store, we can deliver it. Similarly, customer really like the product. They want to buy it, but not sure whether the size is fit or not. They'll say, OK, I will reserve this product for me. I will come to your store. I will try it and then buy it. Maybe they will buy the same product or they might something else. So as a Omni channel, as a platform, is enabling better customer experience, thus helping retailers like us to acquire more customers, retain them for long. Yeah, it engages the customer. The Omni channel gives the engagement also, and you convert those ones also, right? See, oh, what we have seen in the past, say, like uh, in last two years, people who are into the brick and mortar, they have gone online, they are on the marketplace. So that gives the Omni channel, say, like I would know, want to know what are the, those pillars which we can't miss it for the Omni channel. See, uh, there are three, four key in any retail which we need to have in any service-oriented business. One is seamless customer experience, which means if uh, I am by ordering a product from a marketplace or a brand website or come to a store to buy, I should get the same price. And I should get as a consumer, what benefits I will get in your own store, you should get in whichever platform you buy. And your technology is to be fully aligned. So one of the biggest challenges in Indian retail we've been facing is get a right technology in place. So inventory is real time, it has to be real time. If a customer is ordering online, the same product is somebody is picking up from the store which a system thought would be available, but some other customer already built it, this should, system should automatically identify which is my next store available and reserve the product for the customer. So once we have technology and seamless pricing and uh, delivery experience and great customer uh, service is the most important point according to me for uh, good seamless omnichannel. Sushanji, please tell us about these. If, if you have say, like anything, tell about more about on the pillars, say like. See, one is, of course, I think the base of any omni-channel is a unified inventory. I think it is extremely important that the inventory is, is, uh, is common across all, all channels that you show. Uh, so that is extremely important. Availability is, is uniform there. I think second important point I would say is uh, in terms of a unified customer view. If a customer is coming to you as offline or an online, independent of how she is coming to you, I think it is extremely important that we identify that customer. What did she buy before? What are her needs? What is it that she could possibly buy? It should not happen that if, if I am, as a customer, I'm going offline, I get a completely different experience and I get a completely online, I go, nobody recognizes that, who am I, right? So I think a unified customer view is, I, I would say, the second part of it. Uh, third, I would say that your processes have to be extremely strong. I think you call it processes backed by technology. Uh, a customer, whichever way she is interacting, in whichever order, it could be offline, online, online, offline, or a combination of these in a repetition, I think the processes should not break. So I think uh, process technology would be the third pillar. And the fourth pillar, I would say, is uh, if we look at it, omnichannel requires a very uh, strong cooperation or a coordination between online and offline channel, right? Uh, and I, I think 
the way at least these have grown in most of the companies, online has grown either separately, offline has grown separately. So I think it is also an organizational culture which drives Omni Channel. There has to be a proper coordination between online and offline. So I think these are the four pillars I would say are important to drive Omni Channel well. Anurad, would you like to add something? So definitely one of the first thing when it comes to Omni Channel is starting with unified inventory. But in my business, unified inventory works entirely different because each SKU, there's only one quantity. So usually in any marketplace or anywhere, it's very simple when you have multiple quantity, you know which product goes up. You know, if someone wants to buy this product online, they can just say, I'll come to the store to check it out. But that is something which doesn't happen in my industry being a sari industry. And each product to get replenished again, it might not even come or usually it takes minimum two to three months. So what we mean by unified inventory is for each store to know what product is available in another store with images and categorization. So in case they're looking for a bridal red sari and we are done showing off all the 30 we have, we can help showing what is available online and what is available in other stores. And this helps us fulfill our customer's requirement either by shipping it to their house or getting it in person to that city to show. And this is only possible because of omni-channel experience and technology involved. Anurudhi, I'm, I'm correlating your business with the electronics where the each piece have a unique ID. <laughs> Wonderful. It's, it's, it's for me, it's a say, first time I'm hearing this kind of thing into, into the garments. Wonderful. That is, actually, for me. that is actually one of the reasons why this uh, ethnic uh, handloom industry is something which cannot expand exponentially very quickly because it takes time to build a collection for each store and that is how we expand the business. Wow. Great. Raghavji, please tell me about this, say like the pillars about the say Omni channel if you... I mean, absolutely, right? Anirudh and Sushant have both covered about uni uh, unified inventory and uh, operations being, you know, strong, right, between the offline and the online. I would, I would go further and add on, you know, marketing and advertising is quite important, right? Because again, if, uh, I mean, we personally do D2C, we don't, we're not listed on marketplaces. So for us, it's uni uh, Omni Retail is about more building on the traffic on through your own website, creating that traction, generating the sales from your own website. And for that, you need to be established as a good brand. So again, advertising is quite important. Second, you know, being present in, you know, rural parts of India of UP and Bihar, uh, logistics gets quite tough. And uh, the whole getting the order picked from one store and getting it shipped to the other pin code, that all needs quite good amount of coordination. So I would say shipping and order fulfillment is another backbone of the Omni retail. So you have taken a one more point, that is the unified marketing across all the channels. A wonderful point, wonderful point. Yeah, I think another key point is uh, towards your re reverse supply chain, uh, which needs to be really seamless. Uh, customer needs to have an option to buy online and exchange it offline or return offline and vice versa, uh, which, um, uh, which would give a very um, you know, seamless experience to a customer. Uh, and to even towards uh, your loyalty points, I mean, Starbucks is uh, the best example, I would say. Uh, towards this, when in you enter any Starbucks store, you pay online or you pay uh, by your uh, rewards, uh, or you pay, um, uh, you know, cash. You have that rewards uh, uh, accumulated on your card, and you can redeem it anywhere, maybe at an uh, online uh, uh, online uh, store or uh, offline. So I think reverse supply chain is another uh, key pillar. Uh, uh, to build a strong uh, omni-channel presence. Yeah, very well said. It's a reverse supply chain actually build the trust with the consumers. Because he, he, he takes it say like, yes, I'm confident enough. If, if I don't like, I can return it. And that is again as seamless as I'm receiving it. Wonderful, sir. <clears throat> so I, I have seen a lot of houses uh, used to uh, deliver goods from their warehouses. Now they have shifted to the hyper local. How do you see, say, like what what this kind of the changes made? Say, like people are shifting to the hyper local. Why why they are shifting to hyper local? What is the need of this hyper local into the omni channel? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this again depends on the kind of commodity you're in. Uh, with us, we have more than uh, 15, 20,000 SKUs, so it becomes very difficult to be uh, present uh, hyper local. Maybe we could start off with our uh, top sellers and best sellers, but uh, uh, overall, as an industry, uh, obviously, hyper local is the next big thing because. Uh, uh, according to a research, 80 to 85 percent of consumers are most satisfied with deliveries. Uh, the, the faster you deliver a product, uh, the lesser the chances of returns and um, you know your conversion rates are obviously really high. Um, so yeah, I mean hyper local again, uh, depending on the kind of need uh, and the kind of commodity uh, you're in uh, is obviously a, a big future. All right. Raga, what is your experience on this one? See, I mean, uh, you know, now, nowadays we've been hearing about 10 minutes and 15 minutes delivery, right? Um, and again, you know, again, operating at a scale of like 40,000, 50,000 SKUs in a given store, we would definitely do hyper-local wherever possible from the nearest store, from the nearest location. But again, uh, I, I would say, you know, this really depends on the need perception to the customer, right? Let's say for a, for a food or like a grocery, you know, a customer is probably willing to get the food or the product within 10 to 15 minutes. But let's say in April, is the customer really bound or is the customer so eager to get it within 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, Raghav, according to me, uh, when we talk about grocery, grocery, okay, somebody may require in a 15 minutes or an hour or so, right? But into the fashion, it's the same day delivery or the next day delivery, it's a fine for the consumers. Uh, maybe, uh, say like Sushant or somebody say like, it's, you, if you want to see, of course, I think it depends on the category that you are in, right? Need, customer need, does not need everything in 10 minutes, half an hour, or maybe even three hours. Customers are willing to wait. Uh, customers might need, means, of course, it is also not a perennial need. Means I might need something today in half an hour. But tomorrow, I might need it uh, in, in, in uh, maybe next day is also fine, right? So I think it depends on the market dynamics. One is, of course, the customer need. Second is, of course, is your competition actually going ahead and acquiring your customers? Because it is going ahead and saying that I am doing it in three hours, whereas you guys are doing it in next day. Right? So that is one thing about the market. But however, like for example, at uh, we all have about 65 stores in Bangalore, right? and we try to do the delivery from the nearest store. Primarily, one, of course, it gives customer the fast, it gives customer within that short period of time, let's say three hours, or at least the same day. Second, it helps us control our costs. And that is where I would also say that while you look at a hyper-local as a strategy, it is important to see how the, the let's say, the unit economics or the economics work out, right? If I am setting a hyper-local at a new place, I am going to incur costs in setting up the warehouse or let's say a dark store or a store, whichever way you may call it. I am going to put in inventory there, right? Uh, I am going to put in some resources. I am going to put in some last mile delivery. So does that cost actually make it better for me than let's say putting it uh, rather than servicing that order from a warehouse, a central warehouse or a fulfillment center. So I would say primarily customer need or let's say market dynamics, which is customer need and competition and second, how do the economics work out. So hyper local definitely from a customer point of view, if I'm a customer today, give it to me in 15 minutes, half an hour, I'm delighted, right? But is that the need from a economics point of view? I think that also needs to be balanced because otherwise it, it just, you tilt it one way or the other and, and the entire model can collapse. Right. Yeah. Agnes, do you uh, are also yeah, just to a... add, Yeah, just to add, see, one of the biggest cost in this entire e-commerce business is the logistic cost. See, hyperlocal, see, we have to think as a, we are all a customer. There are certain products we plan and purchase. We are that ready to wait. There are certain products where I need it immediately. For that, hyperlocal is must. We need to find our logistic ways. There are products as a consumer, they are ready to wait. One, two days, it's good wait. We should not push ourselves for hyperlocal because the hyperlocal costs are a lot higher than your regular uh, courier service. Okay, so we have to keep the costs in mind and also the price. And then how frequently that your product will be sold in hyperlocal. If you get one order a week, you don't need to put a hyperlocal team. You can just still service from your uh, regular uh, courier mode, even though it is same city. So you need to cut the cost and the logistics. Yeah, and Ruth. So one of the, when someone was telling me about hyperlocal delivery, we had this discussion in our business almost a year back. 
and what we thought when if we were to implement it the easiest way was to for online to create separate categories for each store or uh, have an attribute for each product which lists the city and only in the sto in the cities where we have a physical stores we can maybe implement like a same day or a 24 hour delivery is what we thought was practical for us to do and definitely the cost of same day delivery might be less as terms of the delivery charges but the cost of activating same day delivery across multiple cities is something next to impossible if you have unless you have inventories in every warehouse of multiple channels to make this possible under the according to me say like your uh a price, say average price is maybe 50,000 or 60,000. So, which is which is a good price and, and you, you can have, say like you have the luxury to send any person overnight to the, to the destination where you want to deliver the next day. Actually, there was incidences where there was a client who called us. This, this is more of a case-to-case -case basis. Yeah. But we've had clients from rural parts of India, like rural parts from Karnataka, actually. There was a client in Tumkur who wanted something, and this product was there in Delhi. So we actually sent a person physically to the airport, did an air cargo by Indigo, because that is the only thing which can guarantee delivery to the Bangalore within three hours. And then we had a person waiting in the Bangalore airport to pick it up and go to the person by hand to deliver it. And this is something, yes, we have done. And this is the power of technology, what you are going to achieve. <laughs> and one more important thing is how we identify, it's not just about, uh, you know, the product value, it's also about the products, the customer's lifetime value, which, you know, which we get because how the customers have shopped with us, how important this customer is, and all these things come into effect. Yeah, that is, that is there, the acquiring customer cost, say like we, we calculate with the LTV. That's there. So before wasting the time, we, we would like to know <coughs> why is cloud computing is important for omni-channel retailers? And do you see the growth taking place without it? Sushant, should we start it with you? I, I, th I think I have a very simplified answer to this. No, <laughs> cloud computing is required for a unified inventory. And at least I was, I was discussing with uh, some, some people before. I think at least for the last 11 years of my e-com, I've always been on cloud. Right? So I, I, I haven't visualized the, uh, like a digital age without cloud. But yeah, I think it is, on a, on a more serious note, I think it is important to have that unified inventory, which is real time getting updated. And I think uh, cloud is the best way to do it. Right. Agnes, I would like to know from you also. Yeah. See, I believed in technology. When I started my business, all my entire system is on cloud. I never believed in putting a server because it does a lot of work, lot of, takes away a lot of manual analytics. So whatever algorithms you want to put, you can put it there, system will give you the result. Especially for omni-channel, we need to have unified customer database, you need unified inventory. And it has to suggest customer preferences based on the past purchases. So everything can be done only through cloud system, if you try to have systems in silos, some of the big companies in India actually took very long time to come back to omni-channel is mainly because of their systems are offline, their downtime and uptime was huge difference, they, they, were, they were not able to sync inventory real time, there are a lot of loss of opportunity, then they cut off uh, omni-channel for two years, got back entire system online, so before starting Omni-channel retail, we should have one single system talking to all the system through cloud. Uh, Siddharth, would you say, put us some light yeah, on I the think cloud? They've, they've covered most of it, uh, but I think uh, uh, the, the security also matters, right? Uh, so if you have a server in-house, it could be tampered or uh, you, you could have issues uh, with it, but uh, whereas a cloud uh, 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 gives, gives you a, a better insight and obviously a unified inventory and plus uh, it is uh, uh, much more secure uh, than having a physical server at your uh, end. Uh, Raghav, 
you have approximately 82, 83 stores, and all the stores are in the Bihar and UP tier three, tier four cities. How how do you feel the cloud is say like working for you? Is it fine or something or the kind of problems you are facing? Well, I mean, uh, you know, post pandemic, I think uh, one thing every company should have done was, uh, you know, expand and upgrade digitally, right? Uh, upgrade their IT infrastructure. And that's pretty much what we have done over the past two years as well. Uh, we initially worked on a physical server model, again, uh, 83 stores, 83 servers, but now it's all on to cloud, right? And again, uh, the whole genesis of Omni retail is on to cloud. I mean, think of it this way, like a practical example would be, uh, you need a consumer panel, right? Let's say Magento, and then there is an order management service, then there is a logistic partner and then there is the uh, you know the whole shipping aggregator as well as the CRM so they all need to be integrated and they all need to be talking to each other on a constant real-time inventory basis and when you need unified inventory together with it cloud is the only way to go about it I feel and you, you you just put it like whether you are working online or the offline or working on a cloud or somewhere else or it is on premises so for us um, we are still using a physical server in all our physical stores. One of the main reason is the ERP system we are on is not yet supporting cloud. And um, definitely I do see that cloud is the way forward. But um, many companies are still using server-based and are on the process of moving to cloud. And definitely there are a lot of advantages as the panel has been discussing on the benefits of moving to cloud. Perfect, perfect. Everybody is agreed on the say it's a cloud. Cloud is the only say answer to for your omni channel. That's perfect. Uh, let's move on to the next one. You all have thousands of SKUs, n number of your categories. How do you replenish those ones? Yeah, you started, you started, how do you replenish, say like it's a replenishment is the main say like to, to serve your customers. Yeah, so when it comes to my industry which is a hand loom, slow fashion industry, replenishment is something very complicated because it's not something a system can automatically determine and place a purchase order and it automatically comes. We have to manually check category wise because we basically divide it based on occasion, like wedding or formal wear or casual wear, and then based on origin, which is like Kanchipuram, Banaras, or Paitni, or Pochampalli, or things like that. And, and then we basically we see also we have to check on colors available, whether it's pastels, or whether it's solids, or whether it's bright colors. Based on that, we create, um, we use system to understand if our average stock of this particular origin is less. And that is when we determine how much more quantity we have to purchase of that specific origin. And then a person physically goes to that city, curates the collection, and I myself go to all these cities, handpick and purchase the products for our stores. And then it also becomes even bigger challenge is once we get the stock to our warehouse, we have to determine which stock goes to which city because it's not the same quantity. It's not like we're getting 100 pieces of this, divide 20, 20, 20, it doesn't work like that. Based on individual store requirement, based on their color requirement, based on their preference, like example, New Delhi doesn't sell any big borders of the saris, whereas in south they prefer big borders. So a lot of human intervention has to be involved in curating the collection and stock dispatches and such. So I'll tell you a, a, means a peculiar or an extreme scenario, right? Uh, let's assume that there is a, there is a store, uh, a customer has walked in and she has picked up an SKU which has only one unit. Right, that uh, that, lady, uh, that customer has put that SKU in her in her uh, in her shopping bag, and she's browsing around the shop to see some other things. Now that product has technically not got billed; it is still showing in the system. Now assume there is another customer sitting maybe two kilometers, three kilometers away from that, and she places an order for that SKU exactly in that time frame of maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Now it's extremely important that we don't spoil the customer experience here. In one scenario, it is possible that because the online order has got placed, that inventory has got blocked on the system. This lady in the store, when she walks up to the billing counter, it cannot be billed because the inventory is already exhausted. It's not a very good customer experience for 
somebody who's there. She might just put up her entire basket on the counter and just walk away. If, let's say, we, we honor that order, now the online customer stands to either get her order cancelled or it goes to some other store or other fulfillment center or a central warehouse from which the time will go. So I think it is extremely important. I'm taking, of course, in a very extreme case where there's only one, one SQ, but I think if, if the problem solves for this, it might solve for many others as well. So uh, it is extremely important that we maintain that customer experience. And I would say that it is, it is really important to know how much inventory, what depth of inventory, how many SKUs, what kind of margin of safety, how much do I expose it online, how much do I keep it offline. Do I expose, do I have a different margin of safety on, let's say, Sundays when there is more walk-in in the stores? Do I have a lesser margin, uh, sorry, a lesser margin of safety during non-peak hours? Right? So and I think based on all this is what there has to be kind of an rep auto-replenishment system. Right? It has, it, it, there cannot be a manual intervention that, oh, I think today this should go because, because it suddenly puts in a lot of variables. So I think that is how, of course, means I think we, we are still perfecting it or we are still improving it rather than uh, perfecting is not a right word. But I think that's how we, we manage that. Yeah, absolutely, Shufranth. It, it works on the algorithms. It's all every time it's improving and improving. Yeah, Agnes, I think yeah. you have a, some specialized answer. See, see, we are in fashion, okay? So, you know, we have something called fashion pyramid. Most of the, uh, you know, brands operate in that pyramid. There are certain products which they call core or basic, which is 365 days same. Uh, say, for example, white shirt in a menswear, or, you know, my business, I run a women's wear business, women's bottom wear business. My business, 60 percentage is core. So that has to be replenished every SKU by SKU. And we have 500 store. We cannot depend on manual. So we have a system automatic. There is fashion part of it. It has to be replaced. I will not replenish the style. If a style is to sell out, I have to give new, new customer. That's how freshness into my store comes in. So that is partly automated, partly manual, because we still don't, don't have the algorithm of managing dynamic customer preference. A, fa a fashion design will sell well in one of my Delhi store. Maybe in my Chennai store, the same product might not be selling. So somebody has to intervene and see, okay, this kind of product selling well in Delhi, you send that to Delhi, this product is selling in uh, Chennai, you have to send this to Chennai. It's a very peculiar case for Indian uh, point of view because Indian is not a country, it's a continent. We have 36 different countries within India because we sell <laughs> across India. I, I, I sell a store in uh, Jammu and also down Trivandrum. Their season has, seasons are different, their preferences are different, silhouettes are different. So 70 percentage system machine can learn and predict and send to the store. The 30 percentage still has to be done manually. That's why we have buyers and planners in the business. Perfect. Uh, Raghav, you tell us about say, this one, say like we would like to hear, say like how do you auto replenish? Well, I mean, uh, anyway, so I mean, again, we, we operate at about, you know, anywhere north of 45,000 SKUs in a store, right? I mean, so it really gets tough to replenish on an item code level basis, right? Like a, a particular SKU level basis. I would say our MBQ levels are set, minimum base quantity levels are set on a category level, uh, right? I mean, just for an example, a jeans, right? I mean, I would look to maintain at least about a thousand pieces of jeans in a store at any given point in time. And there's a constant replenishment that keeps happening, right? Every store gets, you know, new shipment every, in about two to three days. So it gets constantly fulfilled with the required departments. Speaking of Omni Retail, you know, one thing what we could do uh, for the Omni Channel just to ensure that the order is fulfilled, right? Let's say I have 80 stores and the inventory of 80 stores is live. I could have like a particular margin of safety, right? Like once my uh, item level in my quantity drops below 5, let's say that particular item can, you know, delist from my e-commerce pl platform. So, so that case, you know, that just ensures that I'm always able to fulfill my product, right? I never, you know, see any case where I'm not able to fulfill due to lack of inventory or unavailability of inventory. Right. Susant, your, we would like to know your point of view, say like, say like, how do you implement your auto replenishment? Yeah, I mean, the good part for us is that uh, uh, we are 98, I mean, 98 percent of our sales is uh, through our own website. Uh, so we are a lot more data driven. Uh, we have a special team just for uh, uh, replenishing uh, the stock and uh, which is in constant touch uh, with the production team. 
so what we basically do is we calculate um, cycle of each skew and then make sure it is replenished within the uh, you know uh, timeline that is uh, that we assume this is going to be sold out uh, into and uh, we deeply uh, deep drive into the data in terms of colors in terms of which sizes needs to be made more uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, because you're spending a lot of money, right? Uh, acquiring a customer, getting them to your website, and then um, not having the right size or the right product would obviously mean that uh, the money is burned there and your conversions would drop. Um, so I, I, we, we, I mean, um, uh, work really hard on uh, replenishing our stock. Uh, yeah. Uh, See, according to my experience, when we, we worked with n number of brands, say, the people who implemented auto replenishment, their sale increased by minimum by 7%. Uh, that's, that's, that's a huge number. Like, it's, it's a must, must tool to have auto replenishment. Yeah, but it, again, depends on the kind of uh, business you're into. Uh, because I might have a printed shirt, uh, which may take at least 60 days for it to get printed and then maybe another 30 days for it to, um, you know, get manufactured and come back to me. So it again depends on the kind of business, but yeah, automation yeah. is always better. Automation is also there. See, the last question, say, it's, it's a very new word for me, what I would like to say, like, everybody. We are listening to this new word, it's ONDC, Open Network Digital Commerce. How do you think it will help the e-commerce business in India? And how do you think it affects the marketplaces like Amazon, Flipkart, Mantra, Jabong, etc.? Agnes, I, I would like to start it from you. See, this is very new. It's buzzing everywhere. <laughs> Still no clarity. I think... Uh, we don't know whether it's going to be a new UPI platform or uh, uh, a Google shopping platform or a Facebook shopping platform. I think we have to wait and watch how this is, you know, shaping up. Of course, government is trying to bring all the businesses in one single, digital business in one single platform so that customers, buyers and sellers have a one platform to rely on for all their digital shopping. That's what is my understanding. So we still need to wait and watch how this is shaping up. Yes, Sushant. So see, I think uh, the way UPI has democratized digital payments, I think that is how ONDC would democratize or get a lo lot of these small players to get onto e-commerce. So I think that way it is definitely going to be a game changer. The reliance on a few large platforms is definitely going to come down. But I think, I think uh, in, in digital means in, in Transferring money digitally, I think it's, I, I know I have to transfer, let's say, 100 rupees from A to B. But here it's an entire shopping experience. It's an entire delivery. So I think it remains to be seen, a very powerful concept. But I would say at least the way what I have, I have got to know about it, I think it still needs to be seen how it evolves and, and where it goes. But yeah, I think, I think a powerful concept for sure. Yeah, Anrath. You just tell about whatever you know about the NDC. For everybody, it's new. So I've come to hear of the concept, like I think uh, two months back, my team was discussing about how future e-commerce businesses was going to change for MSMEs. And it will give us more. Ma and one of the main reason we are right now not on a marketplace is our industry works on a small margin. And to be listed on a marketplace where we have to compete with others in with less margin it's not possible and they said that ONDC is something which would give us a strong benefit to be on and it is something we're looking forward to see how it pans out and see how small and medium sized businesses in India can flourish uh, online. Raghav, you put it some light on the ONDC, whatever you know about it. I mean, uh, you know, as mentioned, right, uh, the government came up with the initiative of UPI. Uh, they did the fast track, right? So this is another initiative by the government to connect the sellers and the buyers, uh, which is the ONDC. Um, again, you know, uh, still unexplored, but I would say, you know, that this definitely, uh, you know, boosts up, you know, a lot for the, it's a good advantage for the MSMEs, right? And it's slightly for often uh, to 
provide competition to the other market players, uh, right? Because I think this is going to help in the honest pricing model, right? I mean, think of it this way, being in a being a retailer where I have Amazon or someone, you know, but my customers don't know where I am, right? They just you know that they have to go to Amazon to find a particular product. But let's say if you come to ONDC, you can see that actual price, the lower price with the same quality being offered. Uh, so again, I feel it's a powerful tool and uh, it can help with the honest pricing and promote uh, the MSME sector in India. Well said. Yeah, I mean, again, it's uh, pretty new, but uh, I think it would be more towards uh, data and uh, less towards uh, selling. I mean, I, I don't imagine this to be a marketplace. Uh, it, it would be controlling your customer's data, uh, making your return policies very clear and neutral. Uh, and obviously taking control over your payments. Uh, so I think this is, these are the three um, uh, areas where uh, ONDC would uh, take a huge impact. See, as far as <clears throat> I know and I met the ONDC guys, <clears throat> it is not a platform number one. This is the only open network which is, say, connecting buyer and seller. There's no app. See, the, whosoever is a customer, they are having their uh, buyer apps, say, like in the future, HDFC, ICIC, Paytm, PayU. These all will become uh, buyer apps. And uh, one more thing we came to know, say, like in the next two to three years, 70 to 80 percent of business all over India, it's a business, say, like. All India business, 70 to 80 percent will be on the ONDC, which is a huge number. And the charges, what the marketplaces are taking from them, it will come drastically down. So it will be only into the single digit percentage, single digit. Maybe they, they, they have uh, planned only for 2 to 3 percent, nothing more than that, which is unimaginable. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to sum up, say, like what we have decided with, say, like discussed uh, with my esteemed panelist. What is, according to them, what is the Omni Channel? Omni Channel is about zooming out the how to we solve the consumer journey, the problems of the their journey into the Omni Channel. Uh, Number two, what we have discussed is uh, don't allocate inventory to the specific channels. It should be the unified inventory because if, if you allocate the inventory to specific channel, so you are go going to block a huge capex with the, the kind of luxury you don't have. Say there should be one single synchronized stock across all channels. Uh, the channel specific, uh, the returns, say like your customer can buy from the one channel and return it to the second channel and uh, like he can redeem it from the third channel also. And uh, moreover, say like when we talk about it, it's a unified CRM also, like uh, a person can buy online also and offline also, the points he can earn and redeem wherever he wants. And your store employees, see like we, we are losing, daily losing some sales, whatever the stock is not available. See like we should inform, say like uh, see empower our employees into the stores. What stock, if it is not available in the store, they should know where it is available. That is the endless aisle. And according to the, say, like, there is a research report is there. Uh, I'm not recollecting whether it is a KPMG or Deloitte. They have done it. And on that one, say, like, if, if approximately 100 pieces, say, for you are losing a sale, through the endless aisle, you can recover 75%, which is a huge number, right? Say... Number uh, three, there is the, your entire stack on the cloud. If you want to be omni-channel, it's your entire stack on the, say, on the cloud, and work on a single database. Right? If, if you have a production units, you have a warehouses, you have a distribution, you have a, your 
retail EBOs or etc. etc. It should be on a single database. If if you are on a single database which is not syncing, so your decisions are faster and accurate. And uh, moreover, your ERP must be open, so sharing the APIs and consuming the APIs that will impress uh, like. It will be the fast implementation at, at your organization and which gives you the better experience within say like two months or three months, the kind of the modules you implemented and the, the kinds of modules required by your organization. Start with the best industry practices supported by the best matching softwares. No, it's, it's in the last, don't avoid technology, embrace it. That's all. And I thank you very much. And house is open for your question and answers. Please ask them. They are the one of the best guys who can tell you about the Omni channel. And they have done a fantastic job in their organizations. Anybody? No worry. Should we close the? Thank you very much to enlighten us on the Omni channel. I think everybody enriched by the the knowledge what the my panelists shared. Thank you very much.